this is when, when we, we come in. The big problem in the world is unsatisfaction. So, where does the unsatisfaction come from? It comes from not being present, not living the moment, not being satisfied with what you have now. You want more. So you're projecting on the past and you're projecting on the future. And then you're unsatisfied, you're unhappy. Unhappy. <laughs> mm. So basically, if we are uns unsatisfied, it's not that uh, we, ha we don't have enough to live. Unsatisfaction is more about wanting more. You know, this is a little bit the sickness of the capitalistic society. And, uh, and then that's where unsatisfaction, then that's where depression comes from. Uh, when I was uh, growing up in the monastery, I would talk to my monk friends, you know, to my classmates. You know, oh, in the West, there's a sickness called depression. They didn't understand. <laughs> the Westerners are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what is this depression thing? For them, it's inconceivable. There's no, they don't understand this concept of depression. Like, okay, when your parent dies, or your, you know, your teacher passes away, of course you get sad. But our concept of, no, I'm depressed. Depression, like, depression, like, this kind of concept, depression, sickness, it doesn't exist. It's ridiculous, you know, for uh, my Tibetan friends, when I talked about it. They would laugh. How can it be possible if you have food, if you have a family, if you have a roof on your head, you have a bed, you have everything you need, how can you be depressed? How? They, they don't understand. Unconceivable. <laughs> now, if you want to be depressed, at least let it be for a good reason. And make it temporary. <laughs> make it short. Sometimes it's good to cry, but not too much. Because then we start to become a victim, you know? And that's also a mistake. You know? So crying is good, you let go. But also the ego becomes small, the ego disappears, you cry. But not too much, because otherwise after you get angry because the ego comes back again. <laughs> oh, me, 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 poor me, poor me, poor me, blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, so, for example, if we live the moment, then we are satisfied, basically. If we, if we really appreciate what we have, then we don't want more. Because many times we, we, we project on the past, and from that we suffer. For example, let's say I got a really nice candy. I mean, the candy is not a very good example. Let's say <laughs> a new telephone, a new iPhone. So you get a new iPhone, you're like, wow, you know, maybe you waited three days on the street to buy a new <laughs> iPhone. You have a house, you have a apartment, but you choose to sleep on the street to get the new iPhone. It happens, it really happens. So, you get the new iPhone, you have it. So you're, you're happy, right? Suppose it to be happy. You think you're happy. And then you, you, get, you start to get really attached to the iPhone. And you start to really depend on the iPhone for different things. For chatting, for looking, you know, chatting on WhatsApp, looking at Facebook, and blah, 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 all these things. So there's a point where you depend completely on the iPhone. And then one day, it disappears. It's gone. Somebody steals it. And then you're so depressed. Right? But before you had the iPhone, though, you weren't depressed, even though you didn't have it. So what changed there? Because before you didn't have the iPhone, you're okay. Then you got it, and then you don't have it, and suddenly you're depressed. You're really sad because you lost the iPhone. But before you had it, you didn't have that feeling. Why? Because of attachment. Because of habit. Because of comfort zone. So many times we, we suffer, but if we check why we suffer, then we realize really empty. Suffering is empty. You can't... Because, for example, we lose the iPhone, then we're suffering. 
But before we had the iPhone, we weren't suffering. So the suffering is not really based on anything real, but in our mind. So that's why it's so important to check, observe, and research our mind. See how it works. And really value whether it's worth suffering or not. Because many times we suffer for nothing. We worry, we worry a lot, and we waste a lot of time, we waste a lot of energy, we create the frequency of you know, unhappiness and suffering. And even when we're like that, people they see from far away, they maybe they don't even want to come to say hello. Because they feel it. Oh, okay. you know? But if you switch it around, and you, you have joy, your happiness, you give importance to positivity, then when you go, people will want to come to see you because they feel you're happy and they also want a piece of that. They want a piece of the cake. You know, so, so it's, you, you create the cause to bring people together, to feel good, to uplift the energy. So I think it's important to, to have, to be clear what our values are. Because many times we don't really know about the values in life. Because the education system is, um, is very important, of course, and um, has to somehow be updated. Because it's not complete. They educate us how to work, but they don't educate us how to live. So it, there's a lot of confusion when we're growing up, you know, to really understand ourselves and understand our surroundings. So for, for a long time, you know, we can have a lot of difficulty to understand this. And if the education were complete, and they also taught us how to live, then it would be, the package is more complete. We can really, at a young age, already start very, very early. That's why education is the future. So what is the real value? It's not about having more. Right now in capitalism, there is uh, one of the big values. The more you have, the more important, the more respected you are. Even though in the process, you've maybe destroyed many lives, or you made many people unhappy. It doesn't matter. If you're successful, then you're respected. Is that a value? I don't know. I don't really feel it's something that we should value that much. You know, inside capitalistic society, it's, it's normal. I mean, that's what you you would expect, of course. So that's respect. That's a value, for example, right? That is not really value. It's just a concept of egoism. The base of that is egoism. So, for example, one of the things about Western society or culture and Eastern culture is that the Western culture is very individualistic. And the Eastern culture is more collective. Both have their pros and cons, of course. <coughs> so, for example, in the West, uh, we have, we're a very individualistic society. We think more about ourselves. We value the individual much more than other people. In the East, it's more about the, the collective, right? The family comes first, before the individual, the group. The harmony of the group comes before the satisfaction of the individual or the country, you know, etc, etc. So the individual is not valued as much as the community versus the West, where the individual is one has more value. So that's, it's good to get the good parts of one side and the good parts of the other side, put it together. Right, to say, okay, we are an individual, we're going to use this individualistic point of view to really make an effort to help the other people in the collective way. So if you integrate the two together, it can have a really powerful result. I think that's why it's very, 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 very important to really be very clear about your values. <coughs> what are your values? What is really, what matters in life? What matters? What is the real thing that makes a difference? for you and for the other people. Yeah. That's where Dharma comes in. So, okay, so that's that. Yeah. One chapter. One chapter. <laughs> I want to talk
talk about um, how we limit ourselves. Uh, because I think that's, that's I think, an important subject to talk about. How we limit ourselves. We create a limitation. We say, oh, I'm not capable. I, I'm, I'm very I'm mediocre. You know, I can't because in my childhood something happened, so now I can't be better. Or, or I have a physical difficulty, so then I can't practice Dharma. Or, you know, like we always find excuses to be lazy. Always. It's very easy to be lazy. Very easy. But actually, it's much more difficult to be lazy. Try sleeping for 20 hours in the bed. There'll be a point where your back will start hurting. And you'll get depressed, like depressed, like, you know, like your energy will come down. You won't be very happy. You know? So that's why laziness for me, I think, is more difficult than actually action, action to be lazy. You know? Maybe in the short run it looks like, oh, to be lazy is more easy. But it's not, because then everything starts accumulating. <laughs> and you're also not happy with yourself. You won't really be satisfied with yourself. So you'll create the cause also to be unhappy, to not feel proud of yourself. You know, because also it's important to feel a little bit of pride. You know. Be proud because you are, but be humble because you belong. Because you are. Because you exist. Because you have the Buddha nature. So, always check if you're limiting yourself or not. You are capable of doing anything you want. You can be whoever you want, you can achieve any goal if you don't limit yourself. You know, we, we are, if you just think about our, our human body, it's already magic. You know, we just, for us, because it's every day, every day, every day, it becomes normal. So we don't give so much importance. Yeah. So we can, we can taste something. At the same time, we can smell something. At the same time, we can hear something. At the same time, we can touch something. We can feel something. You know, we can feel pleasure. We can feel pain at the same time. So many things are happening, and we are able to receive and understand and interpret uh, the existence or life or whatever you want to call it, or this dimension or many names, right? But through this body, we have the capacity to interpret, to feel to experience. You know, so that's already so magical. The fact that voice is coming from my throat, the vibration, is going through the air and everybody is hearing it the same, at the same level. How does that happen? My voice gets divided? <coughs> All directions? Wow! Amazing, no? Just a voice, just a vibration. You can't see it, but you can hear it. So therefore you know it exists. Right? And how many things like that? In a battery, you can't see the energy of the battery. But you know it exists. Because when you put it inside the Walkman, the Walkman works. Makes music. It's like two magnets. You know there's something there because you feel it pulling or pushing. But you can't see it. Where is it? If you look for it, you can't find it. So in the same way, so many things are happening which we are not aware of. So, we can't be, we're not aware of this. But through the science of the mind and the practice of so many meditators in the past, now we know what there is. Something. We know something. Just like we know there's energy inside the battery. Because somebody has proven it. Okay? So this is, what we have today is, uh, we have Dharma, for example. <coughs> this is an amazing resource, amazing tool for us to understand all of this that is very difficult to understand by ourselves. So, let's say Dharma or information is a, a little bit like, <coughs> like for example, we are lost in a forest. We are completely lost in a forest at night time, so it's completely dark. And we don't know which direction we are supposed to go. We, we, ha we, we have to get out of the forest to survive, let's say. Right? We have no light, we don't know any direction, nothing. So then suddenly there's a full moon that comes. And the full moon helps us to see better. So then we can walk out of the forest. Right? 
But we are not going to the moon. We are trying to get out of the forest. So the moon is a little bit like the teachings and the gurus. We are not going to the guru. We are not going to the teachings. We are trying to get out of the forest. So the teachings and the gurus help us to understand ourselves and to um, come in contact to our true, with our true nature. But we are not going to the guru. We are not going to the, to the moon. You know? Because this is uh, something that many people confuse. And then they're always searching everywhere and they can never find themselves. Because the further you search outside, the further away you are from yourself. Right? You have to look inside, not outside. But in order to understand outside, you have to look inside. And in order to look inside, uh, to understand inside, you also have to look outside. So it's vice versa. But you have to be aware of that. <coughs> you know, how many people always are searching this teaching, that teaching, this guru, that guru, this text, that initiation, this meditation, this blah, 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 blah. And finally, after 30 years, you say, how are you? Oh, I'm not, I'm not well. I'm very depressed. It's like, wow, why? You've been practicing Dharma all your life. How come? You know, it's maybe something is not, they're not doing the right thing. Maybe they're not really focusing on what they should focus on, you know? That's, that kind of confusion is very important to have, very clear. You know, to use the teachings of the Buddha to understand ourselves. You know, the Buddha taught many different paths for different type of people. So that each person, they can find their own technique. They can find what works for them. What they identify with. You know, it doesn't mean that everything is going to work for everybody. You know, we are all different people. You know, we have to also find our own, you know, our own path. Because I, nobody can come to you and say, okay, I found the truth here. Take it. Because this may be my truth. It doesn't necessarily have to be your truth. You have to find your own truth. The thing is that we have the possibility and we have the information to help us to find that truth in a much, much faster way. You know, so that is why we're so lucky <coughs> to be in contact with like His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Namazu Paramitya. You know, very lucky. And all the other gurus and teachers you know, each person will have to find what, what really resonates with us. You know, but we really have to value that. Because we are alive at this time, you know. It's very special. Very, very special. Where technology is at its peak. Where science and spirituality are coming together with emptiness and quantum mechanics. You know, so it's, it's a big deal to be alive today. <laughs> so, I don't want to take too much time already because it's already getting late. And I'm sure many of you are working tomorrow. But I also I want to talk about karma yoga, just maybe short minutes, karma yoga. Um, because karma yoga, why is it so important? It is because it's we are also giving our energy, we're giving our time. The most valuable thing we can give is our energy and our time and our space. This, from my point of view, is the most valuable thing we have. So when we do karma yoga, we're offering that. And we're giving energy, we're giving time, we're giving space, our space. Um, so in a way, we're, we're leaving the comfort zone, and we're making an effort to be better people by giving in action. So it's good to meditate and visualize on bodhicitta, you know, on compassion, and to do meditation, but it's also very important to put in practice what we, what we learn. So a good way to put in practice is everything that you do, you just dedicate to humanity. You know, it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to volunteer or go and work somewhere. It's just whatever you're doing during the day, every day, you just meditate. On it. Try to be present. Try not to let the monkey mind go everywhere. Just be aware that the, the mind comes and goes. Thoughts come and go. Don't become a slave to your emotions. And just dedicate the time that you spend doing things like a karma yoga. You, you just offer. So this will help you a lot to improve the harmony inside yourself. Because we are all trying to look for happiness. But happiness is not something that you can just grab. You know, it's, it's a little bit like the carrot in front of the donkey. You know, uh, we are looking more for the non-unhappiness. Because happiness is a state of mind, a constant state of mind, which is a little bit more far away. 
So if we focus more on the non-unhappiness, it's more easy to achieve. And by, by reaching that, then we, we automatically create the cause for us to be happy and others also. So let's try to not be unhappy. And how do we do that? It's by creating the conditions to not be unhappy. By dedicating your work and your time, your space, your energy to others. di offrire, di offrire il nostro tempo, la nostra energia, e, eh, di offrire il nostro tempo e la nostra energia e mentre lo facciamo abbandoniamo la nostra zona di sicurezza, la nostra zona di comfort, lo facciamo donando il nostro tempo e la nostra energia, lo facciamo attraverso la nostra azione, quindi va bene meditare, va bene meditare sulla compassione, sulla bodicita, ma è altrettanto importante anche mettere in pratica e eh, dedicare poi all'umanità. Quindi qualunque cosa facciate, eh, cercate di essere presenti, non permettete a questa mente scimmia di andare eh, dove vuole, e non fate in modo di non essere schiavi delle emozioni, quindi essere presenti eh, rispetto ai pensieri che sorgono e dedicare il vostro tempo, offrirlo, come ad esempio quando compite il karma, karma yoga e poi cercare di migliorare, ad esempio la felicità può apparire come qualcosa di molto lontano, allora magari è più semplice pensare a focalizzarci sulla non infelicità, perché se ci focalizziamo sulla non infelicità, sul non essere infelici, allora automaticamente iniziamo a creare le cause per non essere infelici. Per essere felici. Per essere felici. E poi in che modo lo facciamo? Lo facciamo dedicando il nostro tempo, il nostro spazio e la nostra energia agli altri. And I'm sure most of you already do this. I'm 100% sure. So it doesn't really matter whether I say it or not, you're going to continue doing that. And I really want to thank you for that. Because even if you don't believe it or you don't think, you're changing the world. You are helping humanity, you're helping the earth. You know, really with your everyday action, your everyday thoughts. You know, I really, I'm very thankful. We're all thankful for everything, all of this. So I just want to say thank you for that, and please continue doing so. And the one last thing is uh, just to be aware that uh, we have two choices, right? One is to go forward, one is to go backwards. Right? So constructive emotions, constructive thoughts, and destructive emotions, destructive thoughts, and actions, of course, body, speech, mind. Words we say, every time we create a habit, it becomes easier, easier, easier. And the backwards is the same. So for example, if we create the habit of being positive and going forward, maybe next life we'll be born in a vegan family, very harmonious family, where everybody respects each other and they're very interested in like growing more and helping other people. And if we go backwards, then maybe we create the causes to be reborn as a tiger. That to survive we have to kill, we have to make other suffer, or we can be reborn in a favela, in a in a gang where you have to prove yourself, so you have to kill somebody in order to prove yourself. And you have no choice. And every time you're going more and more, more backwards whether you want to or not. You know, so right now we, we are very lucky. We have that choice. We're not in those kind of situations. So therefore, make that choice every day, you know, to go forward, to help others also to go forward. You know, to affect and influence everybody else. Because even though we don't believe it, most people learn from the example, not the blah, blah, blah. So enough of my blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start action. Yeah? Yes? yes. Agree? Yes. Okay. Deal? <laughs> Deal. Deal. Pinky. Pinky. So let's uh, do the dedication now. So do we have Umze? Who wants to open <coughs> Thank you.